Dead Set Legends. It has been a very long time since uh, I've done a video for the channel. For that, my apologies. Um, it has been really, really busy. Um, but that's no excuse. I should be uh, bringing you guys along for the ride. So hopefully, this is what we're gonna do. So as you may or may not know, the Duke Joint Rocker is Birdwood Guitars, that's me, um, our best-selling cigar box guitar, straight up. Now, the sneaky thing is that it's not a cigar box. Um, it's actually a, a handmade box um, using either oak, uh, pine, maranti, any kind of plantation timber I can, I can find that's lovely and straight to make the boxes. Um, I'll show you the box now. So this is a traditional cigar box. They come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. I've got beautiful packaging and um, they're a favorite. And I love using cigar boxes, but here in Australia, it is uh, insanely difficult to get um, a good range of cigar boxes. Um, so probably nine years ago, I started building my own boxes and decorating them and doing all sorts of fun things with them and selling them that way. And they're really heavy duty. Um, if you have a little look at the inside of a cigar box, even with bracing, you still have to be fairly careful with it. it it's basically four mil thick um, plywood, ply bottom, which is probably about three mil thick. The top's a little thicker. And quite often you'll find these also made out of MDF as well. And they're great and they're really, really great. And if you frame them out, they're quite good. They're okay. And keeping in mind that all the tension on a cigar box guitar is, is held in the neck. The body doesn't have to deal with any stresses at all. So that's why cigar boxes are really handy. Uh, and that's why in, historically they were really, really popular um, with, um, you know, blues and roots musicians who were coming up who might have been impoverished or those people who had a bit of money but still wanted to be creative. So, Keeping in mind, cigar box, always great. I'll never stop building cigar boxes, but, or cigar box guitars, but. All right, this is the Duke Joint Rocker box. My lighting in here is terrible for this, I apologize. Um, this is the Duke Joint Rocker box. Um, it is three mil ply top. It is a five mil ply bottom. Now, the top will get bracing. Uh, as well. And have a little look how thick the sides are. So the, the sides on these are incredibly thick. Now I'm twisting that and it's not going anywhere. It's, you could drop this, you could, this is as solid as an electric guitar. All right, it's, it's really solid. And the whole idea of this, his, this series of guitars was that it was designed to be really, really, really strong. So that if you are gonna take it on the road, if you are going to play it live, or you know, have to whack someone on the head with it if they're being a uh, twit, <laughs> it would survive, ideally. Um, let me give you a little idea of what one looks like. I've just finished one. It's still, the oil on the neck is just finally curing. So tomorrow is the day when it'll actually get its, uh, the, the strings put on and intonation, all that sort of stuff done. There we go. So that's the Duke Joint Rocker completed, or almost. All right, this is a four string. Yeah, you got your dot markings on the side. It's like, it's a it's a real solid piece of kit. And like, it's, it's tough. Um, it's a nice size. It's a really comfortable size. The balance is actually really, really quite cool. Like if you feel, I'm just holding it out with one hand. There you go, my fingers. Just holding it. So it's got a really nice balance to it as well, which is quite cool because a lot of the times cigar box guitars are neck heavy and they want to go and neck dive. Consider the size of the box. So you can see it's, it's a bit bigger. It's a little bit bigger than a traditional like Romeo Juliet number two cigar box. So with that in mind, what I wanted to do, this Prince is here playing, so that's all, all good. What I wanted to do was basically just uh, over the next few days, take you through the, the construction of 
um, a two joint rocker. So first things first, I'm gonna show you the stain. So that's, I'm just, I'll bring you around this way. Just so you can have a little look. There is a video about how I stain this um, already on the channel. So if you wanna go back and have a look, please do. Otherwise, stick, stick with me. And I'll just show you the materials that I've used to stain the guitar. Um, the first thing that I do, I use a Feast and Watson, um, a black. And what I do is I basically just, and this is a spirit stain, and I, um, I basically just cover the whole thing in black stain. Then what I do to get that kind of weathered effect is I'll hit it with sandpaper. So I'll sand it back and I'll do that to the back of the guitar as well. And also to the top so that we don't end up with any blonde showing through or, uh, this is a uh, Maranti I've used on this particular one, which is a um, nice, it's a nice tone wood actually, Maranti. It's it's apparently got very similar, um, very similar uh, attributes to um, mahogany. So that's that. And then what I'll do is I slap a coat of this. Now I've had this for eight years, and this is decking timber. Deco style um, decking timber stain. It's a nice dark color. And I slap that on over the top of the black and that's what gives it its dark stain. Where do I get that particular stuff? I actually got it from Aldi about eight or nine years ago and I'm still going through it. It's been absolutely brilliant. And when they bring it out again, if they bring it out again, I'm gonna buy it again. And I hope it does me another 10 years. So, my God, 10 years. I'll be 62 in 10 years. Fair dinkum. All right, okay. <laughs> Panicking, all right. So, what I then do is, if you can have a little look, bring you down there to the, to the box. So this is how I measure up. Now, I use a 25 and a half inch scale length on these guitars. I can do them shorter. In fact, I am currently working on a, like a junior model, which will just have a volume control on the top. It's a smaller box. Um, the reason I, basically, because I just had some smaller bits of timber just hanging around, and I just thought, I don't want to go going to waste. So I'll build a, I actually thought, to be honest with you, I thought about building it for myself. I thought I wouldn't mind like a jig joint rocker. I don't usually use a tone control on the guitars. I put the tone control on these, but I don't often use them myself. So um, so I was gonna actually build one for myself and then I thought, well, no, I'll build it for me and then I'll stick it on the website. And if it sells, it sells, that's fine. <laughs> um, so how do I get my lengths? Now I use a 25 and a half inch scale length. Now what I do, I have just here a meter ruler. I apologize for those people who work in, um, in Imperial. Uh, with a caveat, um, I measure 25 and a half inches here. However, when I, mm -hmm. uh, and I've got my fret markings on the ruler, so I simply just transfer the fret markings over. However, when this gets a little bit off, I'll then go back to the Stumac calculator and I'll actually do it in millimetres. So you're really looking at six, but I usually, it's 650 millimetres, um, which is pretty much 25 and a half inch scale length. Um, so what I do, if I hope you can see, I'll just, I might bring you down here so you can just see the guitar. You don't need to see me. And there's the box. There's the box. So I put the box up on its end like that. I then, I'll get, I'll get a blank piece of wood. You get a blank piece of timber, oak. So the very first thing I'll do is I'll put the, with a pencil, I'll put the notch here in the neck. So for my angle for the headstock. So that's that. I'll put that notch in uh, just at the top there. Then what I do is I look for a nice amount of room 
on the guitar and I put two little marks and that represents the nut. Okay, I make sure that I've got enough room. If I've got a four string guitar like the other one I just showed you, I'll make the headstock a bit longer. But if it's a three string, I'll make it a little bit, little bit shorter, such as this one here. So you can see I've even just eyeballing it, I'm basically the same distance from those marks, this is one I've already done, to these marks here. So I'm, I'm quite used to it after building so many, it's becoming second nature. All right, so what I'll then do is I'll get the neck blank the first thing I do is to make sure that the neck is actually straight. Um, if it's going to have any bow in it, I want it to bow upwards a tiny bit. I don't want it to have a hump in it because if it has a hump, especially in this area here, um, you'll find out that it'll, if you're fretting notes here, it'll fret out. So you're better off with this timber because there's no, there's no truss rod. Um, you're better off with just a little bit of an up angle if there is... Um, a bend in the timber. So that's what I look at. That's what I look out for. All right, so what I'll then do is I'll grab the guitar box and I'll put the box next to the um, next to the neck, okay? Now, the neck doesn't run all the way through and that's really important to recognize with, the, with these guitars. This isn't a through neck, okay? Uh, it's actually a three-piece neck design, that's how I build mine. All right, so what I'll do is I'll get my ruler and I'll lie my ruler out on the counter on top of the piece of timber that I've got there. So there we go, popping that on top and I'll rest that there. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move and here on my ruler, and you can't see that, here on my ruler, just there, I've got 650 millimetres, 25 and a half inches. I've got that marked. So I can see on the box where it's going, where the bridge is going to be. Now this to me, this is too far back because I want to have a little bit of room for the controls. So I'll bring the bridge up forward a little bit. It's not exact, all right? It's, it's always going to be within about three or four mils just visually. I, I don't, I eyeball this, all right? I don't do this using measurements. I just eyeball where do I want the bridge on the guitar, on the guitar top, and I always want it around about here on the guitar body. See that there? All right, so that's where it's going to be. So what I do over here at the front of the guitar, I put a mark, and then I put another mark. And there's two marks that I put. This is where the fretboard's going to finish. And this is where the tenon comes inside the guitar. Now, I'm going to show you that in a second, all right? So what I'll then do is I now need to cut, and I'll bring you back a bit so you can see a little bit more of what I'm doing here. All right, because as I said to you, this is a two-piece neck. So here's the first part of the neck. You'll notice there's a notch there. So I've actually notched out the neck. This is where the lid's going to fit on. So the lid of the guitar will actually fit there like that. And then the fretboard will be a little bit higher, okay? Now, depending on the thickness of the fretboard that I use, I'll just bring you up here so you can see me. Depending on the thickness of the fretboard that I use, it will depend on how thick the inside part is going to be. Now, this is how the guitar actually looks when it's, the neck is actually put together. It looks like this. All right, so that's the neck without the fretboard. You'll notice I've got my comfort groove here for, for playing. If you're playing up high on the neck, it's not gonna stab you or be uncomfortable. So it's got a nice little groove there. Some people round the whole thing. It's just, for me, it's not necessary. I, I don't want to round the whole thing. Um, and then I've actually got a riser here. Now this is exactly where the bridge is going to sit. I use the steel intonatable bridges for these and this is where the bridge actually will sit on the guitar. So when this goes into the guitar, it goes like that. Now this creates a tone cavity here. And then I drill out for the uh, sound hole and I've got enough room for a pickup and I brace. I put a brace on the top so that you don't get that warp because you'll notice with three mil, 
it's, it's got a bit of flexibility in it and I don't want it warbling. I don't want that warbly sound. So that basically is how I construct the neck for a juke joint rocker, CBG.